morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 406 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah. yeah. This evening, recording day is Monday, June 17th for broadcast on Tuesday morning, June 18th. We assume it is going to be a scorcher here at the Beer Lodge, given that the heat dome has settled in. Uh, I don't think we're at peak heat dome yet today, but it has definitely started to settle in. I took one walk outside today and it was like, oof, man, that that uh, that is uh, slightly oppressive. I am your host, the Eager Beaver, pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver, and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. But before we do anything else, Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health today, sir? Well, sir, uh, uh, honestly, I'm too tired to even tell you. <laughs> That's the honest to goodness truth. <laughs> I've had 30 minutes uh, to myself to maybe 40 minutes to just chill. Uh, and it was get home. As soon as I got home at like six 30, uh, have a quick snack and then take Lola out, come back, sit down, have a proper meal. Uh, then I discovered that I had, um, somehow, and I realized it, I don't know, I came in and I was home for 15 minutes and I thought I have lost my work phone. I lost it on the train. So I immediately went to my computer, did the find my iPhone and found it and then said, you know, call me. And the person called me, says, yes, I have your phone. I'm like, okay, uh, where, where can I meet you? He's like, just come meet me at this place. So I went and met him. So, you know, that was about an hour to go there and back. And, uh, came as soon as I walked in the door, I'm like, I had to pick up a couple of items, you know, as one does. And then it was like, you got to take Lola out again. I'm like, okay. So I took Lola out for a walk. <laughs> I got back at 10 after nine and I'm like, I have to do, I'm supposed to do an ASMR show, but we have to record at 9.30. I need 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes. I, like, I'm going to, I need just some chill brain brain right. time, you know? So, yeah, so that's uh, that's how my uh, night and day has been. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm uh-huh. a zombie. Yeah, I'm doing well, too, but uh, I'm, also, I'm also a bit of a zombie. Um Actually, yeah, a little bit this is for the nine thirty in the evening. I'm having no quarter to ten. What am I saying? I'm having a beer. Yeah, I'm. I'm a little grateful for the pre-record, um, because I, I am going to look forward to hopefully sleeping in tomorrow if my uh, my biological clock doesn't automatically wake me up. Uh, but then we're going to have a pre-record uh, tomorrow as well. Oh, we are. Uh, yes, because uh, our our guest. Uh, um, oh, I, well, actually, right. well, Robert Whitley, uh, we're going to be right, interviewing yes. him tomorrow for broadcast on Friday. Um, oh, for Friday, but, uh, yes. yes. but uh, we will be uh, on uh, live on Wednesday. Uh, yes, I have assuming, time on Wednesday. Assuming, yes. 
Um, it's because tomorrow I have, not, to, I have to be at work at 7.30. So. Yes, yes. I'm not sure if you want to chat about how the transition's going or... Uh, today was, uh, it wasn't bad. It was, it was good. Uh, you okay. know, I met, met, met the new, the crew I'm going to be working with. The guy is going to be working with actually a uh, really good guy. I'd met him once before actually. And he's like, didn't I come to your place to drop off a computer? I go, yeah, that was you. Okay. Real nice guy. A real easy guy to work with. Knows his stuff. He's good at what he does. So that's a joy. That's a joy. Uh, Cause you know, right. you don't know what you're walking into, right? Yeah. And, right. Uh, no, right away. I was like, just totally chill and at ease. I didn't get home till almost 6.30, though, so, you know, those are... <laughs> Tomorrow is going to be a very long day. Uh, Thursday is a long day, and I don't know. Right now, there's nothing in my schedule for Friday, so... Okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Ah, Kids and Cubs. Uh, it's going to want to be... This one is going to be a little bit fly by the seat of their pants uh, because... Uh, uh, five minutes before, or maybe well, fifteen minutes, I should say, before I sat down to record, uh, I walked through the door here at the Beaver Lodge. So um, there's not much of a show prepared, but there are a couple of things uh, to talk about, and uh, we will. Uh, relatively slow news day um, politically. I don't know if it's because the prime minister's just back from uh, some major international visits, and you know, I don't know if they're you know, getting caught up on some stuff, or you know, to find out to. You know, setting the table for what's coming next. Uh, but there wasn't that much the biggest uh, thing or scandalette uh, that uh, the conservatives are trying to make a scandal is that uh, we had a ship uh, yes. to Cuba, uh, yes. which was supposedly to celebrate something like 80 years of uh, Cuban-Canada cooperation or relations or something. And the conservatives decided to twist that as uh, we sent a ship down there to celebrate the communist regime of Cuba. Um, which was not the case. Uh, it, it was actually so bad that James Bazan, who should know better because he's been permanent for a long time and he's always he's pretty much the permanent guy that they have on defense, either right. as the secretary or like the parliamentary secretary to the minister or something like that. Right. Uh, when he was in government, and then you know the shadow person or whatever, uh, but the critic really is the actual name uh, of it. And uh, he actually posted a tweet saying. They've sent this ship to celebrate the communist regime in Cuba. And if you play it, it's literally the episode of Power and Politics of, I think, three days ago. And David Cochran is interviewing Mila Jean Jolie. And she's explicitly saying it's there because they're celebrating X number of years of Canada-Cuba cooperation. So, so now they're actually put the clip. They lie about what the clip is in the text. And they just assume that their people won't click it. It was like, dude... Sorry. They literally say within the first two minutes what it is the ship is there for, and you heard that and chose to reinterpret that as we're celebrating the communist regime. Uh, so now there's some explaining and whatnot. Now it seems that the real thing that would be actually an issue if somebody wanted to make it is because Russia sent some warships down close to Cuba. Right. Right. This whole sort of, and then everybody's sort of like, oh my God, shades of the Cuban missile crisis. Here we go again, because you know, Russia wants to send a message to the United States hey, we can come close to your waters too and mess around with you, given you know, we're doing what we're doing in Ukraine. Um, but, and you know, and that our ship was there at that time. Yes, okay, that may have you know, created, you know, was that the best planning considering that was going on? But, uh, well, I mean, ours is still there that I know of, and the Russian ships have left. And we have another one in the area close to Haiti mm -hmm. ready. So, um, yeah, uh, it's really no big deal, but I guess they had nothing else going on today. So, well, you know, of course we all have that, you know, he's the son of Fidel Castro thing. So of course they would want to claim that he's celebrating the communist regime, right? You, you know, the, the, the worst one right? about, the worst one about that is he's the son of Fidel Castro. See, here's the photo to prove it. He looks just like him. Okay, so first off, it's it's mathematically impossible for that to have happened because Justin was alive for two years before Margaret Trudeau ever met Fidel Castro. <laughs> he was two years old, so unless unless you got some weird sort of thing going on, it's simply not possible. <laughs> But boy, do they love to say it. Oh, 
It makes him so happy, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's like, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> I just, uh, I just, I did get something here a second ago here. Well, it's, it, was, okay. it came out four hours ago, but I just, it just came across my feed. Um, it's from Robin Urbach. Mm. Mm. Opinion piece in the Globe and Mail. Uh, Pierre Polyev can prove he's a grown up and read the Ensikop report, but what would be the point? It's, it's a long story. I'll read it because I, I ended up getting a um, subscription to the Globe and Mail. For eight eight bucks a month, it is mm. for I don't know thirty six months, and then they charge you twenty five dollars, and in which case I'll just I put it on a credit like a prepaid credit card, so I just mm. will have no money on the credit card. They're right. like, you can cancel it at any time. You have to call us, and there's one person to answer the phone. It takes hours. Like it's designed because they're Bell, right? It's designed so that you, they make it impossible for you to quit or cancel. That's how they do it, you know. So I just put it on a credit card that I know, okay, I don't want to pay for that anymore. I just won't put any money. It's a prepaid credit card, like a prepaid visa. Right. And I just won't put any money on it for, I don't know, a month. <laughs> <laughs> and then they can go screw themselves once they try and screw me. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Anyway, yeah. I'm relaxed. I'm having a beer. It's late at night. Well, I guess actually, technically it could be considered late at night, 10 o'clock, right? Because yeah. midnight is actually morning. Right. Right? So right. 11, 11 p.m. is late at night. Yes, it is. D technically, because at midnight, that is now morning, except it's dark out, so that you equate darkness with night, right? Right. And you equate morning with bright sunshine when it rises. At least I do. I think many people do, too. I think most people would. Oh, we were out late last night till 3 in the morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like there's a... There's yep. A yep. <laughs> indeed, indeed. All right. Um, elsewhere in the news, so th that was basically this cattle today. I mean, it really is nothing. They they were stretching for stuff. Oh, yeah. or we'll be able to get there. Now, uh, the prime minister today apparently uh, gave an interview on power and politics. Would love to tell you about it. Haven't seen it. Going to have to wait a couple. I haven't of seen days. it yet either. But I'm, I'm told, <laughs> I've, from what I've read, people uh, said no. He he kicked ass in it. Well, I mean, this is big. We need to get to the point where we get used to this. That. Well, and each, each because interview, every time we see him in one of these things, like it was like, damn, he just knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Well, and when he was on Ryan Jesperson's show, there was people who despised the man who went, yeah. you know, <laughs> like because he's actually doing politics like an adult and not just spewing out three word slogans that are meaningless and empty and do nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's actually doing politics. Whether you like him or not is an entirely different state of, you know, being, yeah. but. But he's actually an adult, and he's actually behaving like an adult, doing politics for adults. Right, right. Now, the Prime Minister uh, was, as we mentioned, was away uh, a lot mm -hmm. in the last little bit because they had the D-Day stuff in France, and then he came back for a little bit, and then he was off again to a G7 meeting in Italy, and then to the Ukraine Peace Conference in Switzerland. Um, while a little was not reported all that much, but because uh, I just discovered this today and I hadn't heard it any, anywhere on the news, but while he was in Italy, he had a private audience with Pope Francis on Friday as part of his participation in the final day of the G7 Leader Summit. He had also had meetings on Friday with the European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, King Abdullah II bin Al Hussein of Jordan, and the Prime Minister of Japan, Kishida Fumio. Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's the actual proper way to say it. Because every time I hear it on TV, I hear, Fu I, I see Fumio Kishida, but it's really last right. name first. And, um, quote, we just concluded the G7 Leader Summit in Apulia, where alongside our G7 partners, we announced comprehensive action to grow dynamic economies, build inclusive communities, and keep our air clean, Trudeau said in a media statement at the summit's end. The Prime Minister also attended a working session on migration on Friday, a subject that is a priority for the summit host, Italy, and its right-wing Prime Minister, Giorgia Maloney. Maloney is seeking to increase investments and funding for African nations as a means of reducing migratory pressure on Europe. Um, then it seems that uh, uh, they discussed uh, AI together, uh, the Pope and uh, the Prime Minister. Um, it says here, uh, after the meeting, Trudeau, 
uh, the pontiff addressed the G7 leaders on the promises and perils of our artificial intelligence, urging them to keep human dignity in mind when developing and using the technology. Quote, we would condemn humanity to a future without hope if we took away people's ability to make decisions about themselves and their lives by dooming them to depend on the choices of machines, he said. We need to ensure and safeguard a space for proper human control over the choices made by artificial intelligence programs. Human dignity itself depends on it. Um, and then, of course, the, the Pope called on the G7 leaders to ban the use of killer robots. So there you go. Uh, we mentioned the $50 billion U.S. loan to Ukraine uh, using interest earned on profits from Russia's frozen central bank assets as collateral. Uh, Canada has promised to pitch $5 billion towards that loan with that. So that was a big thing as well. Uh, then uh, Bill Blair, the defense minister, uh, met with NATO defense ministers in the Belgian capital of Brussels and uh, while all that was going on. And uh, he said that Ukraine had been asking for funding for security reconstruction and that $50 billion is part of the G7's response. Quote, they do require certainty for planning, not just for the immediate response to the battlefield, but also the work that they are going to have to do in the coming years to ensure the security and integrity of their sovereign borders and to undertake a strong period of reconstruction. Um, then uh, Blair also referenced an announcement that the government made in April regarding the donation of 900 drones built in Canada to strengthen Ukraine's defense capabilities. And on his way to Friday's, Friday's NATO meeting, Blair also referenced the already announced changes to the Canadian-led battle group in Latvia, Quote, Canada's increasing our presence, our precedence, our presence in the alliance's eastern flank where the lead where we lead NATO's multinational battle group in Latvia. We're working to scale up our multilateral force to brigade size, Blair added. As well, Canada is sending the HMCS Charlottetown into the Mediterranean, where it's going to assume command of the standing NATO group too. Blair's latest announcement came on Friday. Um comes as uh, NATO member countries continue to work to meet the groups agreed to upon target of spending 2% of GDP. According to NATO data, Canada was estimated to be spending 1.33% of its GDP on its military budget. Uh, I guess that would be uh, for this year or last year. Well, I, I saw somebody earlier today uh, in a back and forth on, on Twitter talking about how, well, you know, the... Uh, the conservatives will spend, if we elect Pierre Polyev, they'll spend money on the military. And somebody just pointed out a graph and said, no, no. the conservatives yeah. don't do that. As a matter of fact, they cut spending. Yes. The liberals have spent more money on the Canadian military than any other political party in Canadian history, yeah. period. Is it enough? Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. But facts be facts. Harper cut spending. At one point during his tenure... He cuts spending to 0.9%, not oh, even a yeah. full percentage point. Oh, yeah. And he did other things, too. When we were uh, when we had the big banking crash, he promised all our G7 partners that he would uh, contribute 2% 2, 2 of GDP to uh, stimulus spending. He never hit that either. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, his word wasn't worth much. No. Um, now, uh, there are some interesting things happening at Kits and Cubs. Uh, if we're looking at the issue of polling, because uh, while a lot of people are talking about the death of the liberals and death of the prime minister, it seems that uh, rumors of their demise might be a little bit premature. Oh. Um, the bleeding, if you want mm -hmm. to call it that, has definitely stopped uh, now. In some cases, one would say, well, I mean, they couldn't really go <laughs> much further down. So they had to hit a bottom and bounce at some point. Uh, and that could indeed be the case. Um, and I'm looking here, uh, for example, at uh, the big poll aggregator, 338.com. Uh, oh. Mr. Grizzly, oh, sorry, not 338.com, 338canada.com. Right. Mr. Grizzly, and I'm going to put up some uh, images here for uh, the kits. Hopefully, I go. can make it a little bigger. <clears throat> yeah, that's there pretty we go. Good, so, as we can see right here, um, the conservatives, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven reporting periods ago, hit their peak. Now, the mm -hmm. drop hasn't been all that much, as you can no. see. It's very little bit, but it is slow and steady. 
And the liberals was the same thing. They hit their bottom and slow and steady. Now, it isn't, like I said, it isn't a lot no. yet on this over one. But I wanted to mention that because it brings us to one particular pollster, which is Nick Nanos. Now, Nick Nanos is different than the other pollsters uh, because he does a rolling four week poll. Okay. So at the end of the, on the current week, the one four weeks ago drops off. He takes this one, adds it, and then gives you a number. So you have a rolling one. And he does it every week mm -hmm. consistently. So you have consistent time periods. So, for example, if I'm comparing Nano's polling to Nano's polling, I have a data point every week to go from to see some progression over time. Uh, if I'm looking at the other ones, if I'm looking at Ipsos or Lege, it's, you know, if, if it's once a month, it may, one might be three weeks away or one might be five weeks away, right? It's not exactly. So I wanted to use that one. And I'm also using that one because um, on 338canada.com, they give a rating to each one of the polling companies. And there are three of them that have A pluses. One is Ipsos, the other one is Leger, and the third one is Nanos. So there's a lot of people when it comes to Nanos poll who like to discredit it specifically. And um, well, again, if we go by facts first, based on, you know, the best polling aggregator that we have, it actually is one of the better polling companies in Canada. <clears throat> now, um, a man, gentleman named Tyler Meredith, who we've talked about him on the show before, used to be the past head of fiscal and economic policy for the prime minister and ministers of finance, Justin Trudeau and Christian Freeland and Bill Morneau from 2016 to 2022 posted something and it was really interesting because I had noticed it as well, but from a different perspective. So he said, I'm often first to say Nanos Weekly Trackling can be weird, but despite some people calling the current polling quote unquote noise, we should note that over the past five weeks, the Liberal Party of Canada, Conservative Party of Ga Canada, Canada gap has been as follows. 21 points five weeks ago, 20 points four weeks ago, 16 points three weeks ago, 15 points two weeks ago, 12 points just last week. The gap has closed 9% over the last five weeks. Wow. And I, when I had noticed it, I had noticed it through seat counts. So I was looking at that, Mr. Grizzly. Uh, and let's see, what do we got? So this is the one. So this is May 14th. And the Liberals were coming in at 58 seat count, the Conservatives to 12. Then May 21st, Liberals were coming up at 79, the Conservatives at 203. May 27th, Liberals at 77, Conservatives at 202. Then Liberals at 83, Conservatives at 206 for May 31st. And then if we were looking at one that was sorry on that day which was june 7th the liberals 107 conservatives 180. liberals haven't been triple digit on the nanos seat count for quite a long time yeah, no kidding so all of a sudden from 58 to 107 in seat count over five weeks so what is Nano seeing that everybody else isn't yet? So remember when we were asking a couple weeks ago, like why is like this is not behavior of a party? When we're talking about the conservatives that's winning, his little pit stop on the border in Atlantic Canada. Mm -hmm. Not all those little things that he was doing. It's like, what's going on? This may be it. We keep on saying that time's not his friend, and somebody was said, there's this joke going on, what's your political strategy to beat Pierre Polyev? Keep him talking. Mm -hmm. Well, again, 180 to 107. 
is a much closer race than 212 to 58. Yeah. And that's in five weeks. Well, and the election is still, what, a uh, year? And over, over a year to go. So uh, when I'm saying, year. so when I, but when I was saying, you know, a while ago, don't worry, about two years out, mm -hmm. nothing to lose, good way to let the government know that they need to ship up, shape up, is putting your, saying that you're going to vote for the other party or that you're interested in kicking the tires, exploring stuff. But, um, now, the act wears thin when there's nothing else behind it. Indeed. And people are starting to notice. So, and somebody else pointed out something um, that was really interesting. His name is uh, Rambad Bebudi at Geneva Trade Law. And uh, he said, wrote, the trolls are out. Look, I make no predictions about the liberals or the CPC and no comments about polling or the media. Only that politics is unpredictable. Between now and then, much will happen. So the liberals should not despair and the CPC should not be complacent. And um, he brings out a tweet from Abacus, what still has a 20 point lead for the conservatives mm -hmm. instead of a 12, like Thanos. And he says, um, this was one month before the election. And I will put it up here, Mr. Grizzly, for you and for the kids. It's David Coletto of Abacus Data. So I'm, CDN Canadian Poly Survey has the Conservatives leading by 20. All interviews, number of surveys, 1,500. Done after the Bank of Canada rate cut. Liberal vote share hits lowest since October 2015 in our tracking. CPC 42, Liberals 22, NDP 19. So on the date, he put that. Ramud Babudi says, Narrator, the Liberals won a majority a month later. Yeah. True. It's true. <laughs> no, it's absolutely true. That's the thing. So just a little reminder of perspective, right? So well, the, the, the conservatives were leading polls in all three elections that Justin Trudeau has beat them in. The yes. liberals have beat them in. I shouldn't say Justin Trudeau because that's a, that's a misnomer. Yes. All three elections that the liberals have won federally in the last nine years, almost nine years, have literally, they've been... The conservatives were leading the polls in each and every one. So what does that mean? Yeah. It means maybe you don't trust the polls. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not just the polls. It's just don't view the polls as inevitable. And, well, and that's what happened in Ontario in the last provincial election. Because they were saying, Doug Ford's going to win. Doug Ford's going to win. Doug Ford's going to win. A landslide victory. And he did. Because nobody showed up. Right. 43%, the lowest turnout in, in the province's history. And look at what we're stuck with. The guy who paid a million dollars to try and get a report about relocating the Science Center to Ontario Place. And it wasn't even a convincing enough report for anybody to support it. I know. <laughs> I can't with bad. this government. I just can't. It was bad. It it's, was so like they, bad. They're so bad at everything they do. Like, how do you be this inept? Like, I, I understand they, they they can lie and cheat to get to where they are and, 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 you know, pay off. I'm suggesting they have friends who own large publications and maybe a, a guarantee of a payment went. So I, just merely speculation on my part. But it was funny how all these newspapers, all these publications came out saying he's going to win a landslide victory. Mm -hmm. And when we really did want to get rid of him, most people I knew wanted to get rid of him and had had the uh, the um, con uh, the liberals and, and the uh, uh, the liberals and the NDP actually worked together and decided mm -hmm. to form a coalition. Oops, we lost Mr. Christie for a second there. Um, so he's uh, talking to, to Mademoiselle Fox there. I had to cut off the mic. Um, so, yes, there we go. I think we have him coming back to us now. Yeah, I'm back. There you so, go, Mr. Grizzly. Yeah, no, I just muted my mic there for a minute. Bridget yeah. was talking. Um, so, yeah, we saw what happened when, when uh, the, 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 
the, na- the, the prognosticators said he was going to win a landslide victory. Technically, he did, but with, what, a 13% or 16% margin or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, you com- if, if the NDP and Liberals actually combined, they had a much larger margin of victory. But, I mean, Horvath was attacking Stephen Del Duca. Oh, yeah. or, or Del Duca? Yeah. No. Yep, yeah. Del Duca. Del Duca, sorry. I was thinking Dean Del Mastro, Stephen Del Duca. Different guys, one went to prison, one did not. Yes. He kept attacking Stephen Del Duca in the uh, in the debates. And I'm like, what What are you doing? Yeah. The guy over there is the one who's made life hell for us. Why are you attacking this guy who's not even in power? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, indeed. Ugh. Indeed. So to give you a, another representation here of what I was talking about, Mr. Grizzly, um, because this one is the the graphs over time. So this is the actual, uh, the graph for the ballot, right? So which party do you the party support, basically? And as you can see here, um, once it comes up. Oh, you said, oh, okay, just a second, sorry. There we go. As you can see here, right, right here, there was the low. And you can see how much they've gone up just in this short period of time. See, the conservatives keep on bouncing down and up and so the conservatives are hitting the, the point where they're bouncing up and down. This is a, when that happens, it's usually a point of resistance mm-hmm. right over here. Mm-hmm. So you can see the difference here. But it's not only happening in terms of support for the party, but in terms of preferred prime minister. Mm-hmm. And as you can see here, this BP sort of peaked right mm-hmm. about here, started to come down, and the prime minister hit a low pretty much like quite, I, I think it's the low since historical low for him oh, yeah, yeah. there. And again, uh, this is a, this much bounce is significant and statistically significant in this amount of time. Well, one of the things that people have said uh, that they fear in the next election is that uh, as we often do in this country, we don't vote in a new parliament, we vote a parliament out. Yes. And the concern is that people are, you know, the leader fatigued, they're tired of him, they want to get rid of him. And I'm yeah. like, but... Didn't didn't he give you dental care, pharmacare, and child care? Didn't didn't he come up with CERB? Didn't he come up with CEW? Didn't he didn't his party do all of these things? Maybe, maybe you should look at what that party did and look at what the opposition party has voted against. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. <laughs> the Canadians also rarely vote on what a party has done for you and vote on what a party is going to do for you. Which we're rarely up to. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. It's just Depending. not. I know you think you would go by track record. You've, you know you've given us good government so far. So one, you know, keep it going. But it's maybe we should not, do that. It's not always rational. Yeah. Uh, you say that you have a, a clip uh, of uh, the prime minister discussing Ensacop from uh, the Power and Politics today. Yes, I do. It's uh, about two minutes and forty-one seconds. I, I have the whole clip, the whole interview. Actually, it's twenty-six minutes, but we're not going to obviously put that on. No. But I do have this clip that uh, we'll we'll have a look at right now. And uh, let's just listen to what he has to say. But is it tenable to to just go on without names attached to some of these allegations? I mean, Jagmeet Singh has said that uh, there's nobody in his caucus he needs to worry about. Can you say the same thing with comfort and clarity? Um, I I hadn't known that Jagmeet said that. Um, I would be wary of any party leader uh, drawing any sort of conclusion like that. Including Mr. Singh? I would be wary of any party leader drawing any conclusion like that. There is a range of, of issues around foreign interference that, uh, that our security agencies, that our uh, various institutions are engaged in. Um, we know that foreign uh, actors are trying to interfere in all different parties in many different ways and protecting the integrity of our parliamentary system and of people who choose to step forward in parliament from, for, from false or misleading accusations that may well be the goal of some of those countries wishing to interfere uh, is, is requiring a level of thoughtfulness that is not always conducive to um, selling newspapers or headlines but is what a responsible uh, government must do to continue to engage in foreign interference 
And I'll remind you, we are the government that has brought in more measures, more structures, more ways to deal with foreign interference than any other because no other government ever did anything on that. A lot of people will look at those last two answers and suggest that you are implying there's something to be suspicious about with the New Democrats, right, and their caucus. And this is the whole challenge with this issue, right? I, I am implying that interference in our parliamentarians goes beyond party lines from many different sources, and we need to make sure that before we go accusing uh, uh, anyone from any party on anything, there are really important processes to go through. The Minister of Public Safety, Dominic LeBlanc, talked about the fact that intelligence is putting together pieces of a puzzle. And if you see a single puzzle piece, you may jump to a conclusion that doesn't hold up a few weeks later. And if you took actions on that particular puzzle piece that turns out to be wrong, you can um, do significant damage to our democracy and to our institutions. And that's why we have to be very, very responsible and careful about it, which is exactly why it's a good thing that the inquiry into foreign interference will be looking at this report and making conclusions and perhaps recommendations to us on the way to move forward. There's some so sober second thought for you. Indeed there. Uh, interesting that the Prime Minister has this take because uh, Elizabeth May had also come out, uh, you know, because she was going to be asked why it is that it seems that her version differed, differed so much from uh, Jagmeet mm -hmm. Singh's uh, here according to the CBC um, from uh, Catherine Tunney. Uh, quote, Green Party leader Elizabeth May says it's time for her fellow party leaders to sit down for, quote, an adult conversation about the foreign interference report released earlier this month that's been dominating debate in Ottawa for the past two weeks. Quote, I think that a conversation has to happen in a secure location where we all have top secret security clearance and can discuss things with each other without a media lens, she says. I think when we do that, we will be able to continue the work that actually puts in place the kinds of protections we need. Um, so far, May and NDP leader Jagmeet Singh are the only opposition leaders to read the undacted report. During separate news conferences last week, May and Singh presented different impressions of what they gleaned from the report. May said she was relieved to learn that none of her House of Commons colleagues knowingly betrayed their country, a position she stood by on Monday. Quote, mm -hmm. I will be firmly clear again in saying I read the full unredacted report and the word treason does not apply to any current sitting MP, at least in the underredacted report of the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians. And they went through 33,000 pages of intelligence information to come to that conclusion. There is no reason to create an atmosphere of McCarthyism, a witch hunt feeling of which MPs can be trusted. On Thursday, Singh said he was more alarmed after reading the report and he's, quote, more convinced than ever that some parliamentarians are, quote, willing participants in foreign states' efforts to interfere in Canadian politics. While Singh used the present tense while speaking to reporters, an NDP spokesperson later said the leader's comments should not be taken as confirming or denying that the parliamentarians cited in the report are currently serving. So that press conference is just showing to be even worse and worse and worse yeah. after over time. At the moment, yeah. On Monday, Bay said she's confident in her understanding of the report and she doesn't see vast contradictions between her interpretations and Singh's. So here she is. Now she's trying, she's basically bailing them out right now. Yeah. Because he best he made a mess of it himself. Quote, I think we'll make progress when we can sit down together and discuss it together such that if there are differences of interpretation, we can get into details and discuss them, which we can't do in news conferences, she said. It's an exercise that requires rigor and careful attention to detail, which is why I'm concerned about the potential back and forth between one person in one party saying one thing and another person in another party saying a different thing. Bloc Québécois leader Flee François Blanchet has said he's inquired about getting a security clearance to view the report. So far, Conservative leader Pierre Polyev has resisted calls to obtain a security clearance to read the classified report. Alana Cahill, the NDP's Director of Communications, said the party would be on board with the meeting, but only if all party leaders read the unredacted report first. Quote, no one should put the interests of the party over the interests of the country. Uh, I'm not prepared to go until anybody else goes, and one person says that they're definitely not going to go, doesn't give the impression you want to go. Mm -hmm. Although I do... Yes, you know, probably as an initial position, 
saying that if other parties agree, as a way, a way to see if that uh, ratchets, up, ratchets up pressure on the leader of the opposition to go get it. But if it doesn't, because he seems to be pretty determined to not get it, uh, then you should just get on with it. Quote, we think any meeting can be only productive if it includes all the party leaders once they have all read the report. We look forward to Mr. Blanchet and Mr. Poliev getting their clearances and joining the discussion. This shouldn't be a debate about perceptions of the report. It should be a meeting of all party leaders to discuss actions. Um, now, on Sunday, the Prime Minister said he had concerns about some of the report's findings. Quote, there are a number of the conclusions of the National Security and Intelligence Committee parliamentarians report that we don't entirely align with, Trudeau told reporters. He did not specify the nature of his concerns. Trudeau referred to the previous comments by Public Safety Minister Dominique Leblanc, who has raised concerns about INSACOP's interpretation of intelligence reports. The day the report was released, Leblanc suggested it left out important context and did not acknowledge, quote, the full breadth of outreach that has been done with respect to informing parliamentarians about the threat posed by foreign interference. Trudeau said the fact that Main Singh came to different conclusions about the same report demonstrated his government's concerns. Now, uh, last week, the House of Commons passed a Bloc Québécois motion to expand the mandate of the public inquiry investing, investigating foreign election interference to allow it to probe the claims in the ENSACOP report concerning MPs and senators. So this passed, that's going to be sent there. On Monday, Inquiry Commissioner Mary Jose Hug released a statement saying she already has access to all of the documents reviewed by ENSACOP and believes she can review the committee's conclusions within her existing framework. She said the commission will make every effort to have its final report done by the initial deadline of December 31st. Hug released her initial report last month. Um, and she said uh, that uh, the, the attempts by other countries to meddle in the 2019 and 2021 general elections did not determine which party formed the government. Quote, nonetheless, the acts of interference that occurred are a stain on our, our electoral process and impacted the processes leading up to the actual vote. Now, uh, one of the things that I said on a previous episode is we have to remember that we're talking about two reports. There's the 2021 report and the 2019 reports that look specifically at what happened during the elections. This current NCCOP report that we're all talking about is talking about the periods in between elections and how the ways that they're trying to interfere. And that's why this one has a lot more national security information that's there. Uh, so there really are two two different reports. So remember, if it's the 2019 and 2021 reports, the Prime Minister has known about those ones for a long time. And those are strictly what happened during the election. So when they said, you know, that there was nothing that happened during the election that influenced the results, that is true. But this is looking when it's not an election, what's going on? Right. Now, Elizabeth May has taken a different position from all the other leaders with regard to referring this to the Hogue Commission. Uh, she believed that uh, Justice uh, Hug or Commissioner Hug in this case already had too much to do in the time frame that she already had, which was already too short, and that there was no point in sending it to her to do that type of investigation because she probably wouldn't it probably would not be able to tell us much more afterwards, and then we'd get back to the point where we were. Well, what are the parliamentarians going to do with do with it? Because that's basically what will happen. So she says, well, let's just consider that it's with us to do something with and just do it. The other parties did not seem to agree with uh, that uh, manner of thinking. So, um, yes, uh, you have Elizabeth Bay, I guess, trying to be the peacemaker here, saying, you know, well, I, you know, I mean, I can believe that the relief that there are none. And then you get the backtrack from, you know, Judge Beat Singh's office. She says, I don't really say, think that we're saying things that are all that different. Mm hmm. So he's more concerned about what it is that he did see. I'm relieved about what I did not see. Doesn't mean that we saw different things. So Interesting. She's trying to, to mm -hmm. smooth it over like this. Now, again, not much love lost between the two based on the way that uh, Mr. Singh ran a couple of elections ago and tried to smear uh, Miss May as being uh, someone that would be pro-separatism. <laughs> hey. Mm -hmm. Hey, the, 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 it was really ironic because the NDP was the party that signed the Sherbrooke Declaration, saying that fifty percent mm -hmm. plus one vote would be enough to separate. When we had the Clarity of the Act that says a clear majority on a clear question, and for some reason, because um, I'm not exactly sure exactly why, but the I can't remember off the top of my head, but the NDP was making the case that uh, yeah, that Elizabeth May and the Greens were pro uh, separation and uh, she was like 
I do not know why you keep on saying this because this is not the case. Like, why are you doing politics this way? And Mr. Singh just uh, uh, decided that he he was going to lie about her. It was basically what he did. Yeah. I mean. So, um, I'm guessing again. She once again she's putting uh, country over party because this would be a uh, perfect opportunity to just, like stick a knife in and sink him. A mm-hmm. little more, uh, but she's not. She's doing the responsible thing and trying to man, yeah. wallpaper over what appears to be very big differences. And Mr. Singh still hasn't clearly answered the question yet. No. How it is that your version differs so greatly. And here's the other thing that I found interesting as I was listening to um, some uh, primetime politics on CPAC over mm-hmm. the weekend, catching up on some shows last week that I missed. And uh, on the day itself that the report came out the person from the ndp that they sent to the panel on that show so about six days before mr singh ran read the report Mm -hmm. said the exact same thing six days before as mr singh said when he saw the report putyev doesn't want to know and the liberals are terrible for not having done anything sooner it was literally word for word. There was no, there was not even like a subtle or like a ch, that metric of difference between what was said six days before Singh read the report. So when I say that he really went into, went in there with his lines already prepared and tried to torque the report to fit what it is he was going to say, we know it's true because six days before he sent one of his minions from his party to go out and say the exact same thing. Yeah. So. He's just being disingenuous. So, um, yeah. Less than impressed with Mr. Singh. And uh, on that one, Mr. Grizzly, um, before we go, because I think we'll call the show, it's getting late. Mm-hmm. Um, Evan Scrimshaw, who doesn't have much love for Mr. Singh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> had a really, really, really good take on it. It's called Singh's Treason Fever Failure. Thursday night was a clarifying clarifying night for the Edmonton Oilers, losing Game 3 of the Stanley Cup Finals. Their season is functionally over. They might win a game, they might not, and frankly, I neither know nor care which happens. I've been on the Oilers bandwagon this year, not out of any affection for the Oilers, but because I really like watching Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl play hockey together. I get romantic about hockey, even as I try to be pragmatic. I can't help myself, but Thursday made it clear. They're not good enough this year. If the reports are true, they'll team, they'll, sorry, they'll, the team will re-up Connor and Leon and they'll get one eventually. I really hope they do. I thought I'd be more upset, but I'm not. The simple clarity of the revealed truth was refreshing. There's no ambiguity, no uncertainty, and no doubt. Who is to blame and what to do next matters, but it pales in comparison to the basic truth. And that's all I can think about when it comes to Jagmeet Singh. I've been mad at Jagmeet for years now, ever since he failed to take advantage of the 2021 election and left his party millions in debt, all to gain precisely one net gain in an election where liberals had no purpose for calling the election and the opposition leader spent his time at a studio in Ottawa. And now, (laughs) I'm done being mad, because at the end of the day, he's not worth being mad at. Jagmeet held a press conference this week rebutting Elizabeth Bay, saying there are MPs who have broken the law, and he responded in the affirmative to the idea there are traitors in Parliament. He then had staff walk back that his statements confirmed or denied that the current MPs had done what he plainly stated they had. Now, an inartful statement that's cleaned up by staff isn't a crime, though it's very bad to be unclear about whether you're accusing colleagues of treason. But let's ignore that. If Jagmeet Singh thinks there are traitors in the parliament right now, he has parliamentary privilege and could walk into the house any time it's sitting in name all, any and all dirty treasonous MPs with complete legal impunity. Parliamentary privilege exists for a moment for this to say in the people's house the truth unburdened by anything else, and he didn't. So either Jagmeet Singh thinks there are traitors in the house and they think it important enough to tell us who they are, or he lied to us at his press conference to make the major parties look bad. At that same presser, he attacked Justin Trudeau for not taking this issue seriously enough. At the same time, he denied he'd bring the government down over this. Again, taking Jagmeet at his own word, either Justin Trudeau is willfully abating treasonous behavior and you're propping him up to do it, or you're willfully lying to, to accuse your PM and your partner, who you are giving votes to every week in the House for political advantage. Either way, Jagmeet has got to go. Either way, there's no saving this useless piece of 
Clinton, mm -hmm. who masquerades as a political leader. He is either also abetting treason by leaving Trudeau in office, or he's willing to lie to Canadians about treason occurring for political gain. No matter how you slice it, he is beneath contempt, a failure of a leader selling a fraudulent version of events, lying to this country when we need the truth more than ever. He attacks Pierre Polyev for not reading the report, a supposedly disqualifying act, while he either fails to understand or hopes we're too stupid to understand that he's selling us all a bill of goods. Singh wants Polyev to stop playing politics while he sings another chorus and verse of liberal story, stable story for the cameras. He is everything he claims to hate about Polyev, a liar, a lifelong politician, and a cancer to our politics. To paraphrase David Cameron, it might be the Liberal Party's interest for Jagmeet to stay as leader, but it's not in the national interest. Singh has been a punching bag in these pages, and there's a reason I've laid off in recent months. It's easy to find a thousand words on his latest dumbass flight of fancy or terrible quote, but he's fundamentally a bit player in the saga that is Canadian politics most days, and his party's going to be cut in half at the next election. Spending my time sharpening knives just to get some RTs from liberals who find Jagmeet annoying isn't worth it in the same way it once was. But this is crossing a line. It's crossing about a dozen, but there's a fundamental breach here. I'm sure that there's not actually that much between May and Jagmeet's reads of the intelligence in a sense. What seems to have happened is Singh finds parts of the story more objectionable, or at least more plainly illegal as opposed to merely objectionable than May does. It's an incredible opinion, and maybe even the right one, I can't say. But what I do know is that one of them played politics in their press conference and one didn't. One saw this as an opportunity to explain something to the public and one saw it as an opportunity to play his greatest hits. One stepped up and one showed their need to step aside. One served their country admirably this week and one failed it. I don't know what's in the report any more than anyone else does. I have a guess that I wrote it earlier this week. Maybe I'm an idiot. I don't know. But what I do know is that Jagmeet Singh has made this country worse off for his intervention this week. I, do that Jag I know that Jagmeet served to divide and conquer for partisan benefit when we needed statesmen and not partisans, and I know that we have long passed the point where Jagmeet is making this country a better place. He's either abetting Trudeau and covering up treason by leaving him in power, or his attack on Trudeau is a lie. I know which one it is. Mm -hmm. He's either a traitor for enabling this behavior, or he's willing to whip up treason fever for votes. Either way, Canada will be better off without Jagmeet in the Commons or public life of any kind. And in the sea of things we don't know about foreign interference, this is the most clear thing in the world. Can't argue with any of that. It's pretty much everything I said when I assessed, right? Yeah. Yeah. He chose partisanship over statesmanship. He could choose to explain. He chose to bring the button. He came in with this attack already formulated. He opted for liberal story, sable story. It's just mm -hmm. uh, so disappointing. Can I tell you? But I mean, it's like it is so clear that at this moment it's the call for statesmanship. It is so clear. And to choose to. I know. He's going to choose continue to do, to do it though. business as usual and to try to equate the both and just, and just all the traps he set for himself, you know, where he's just completely tangled in. It's like, 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 you know, Evan says, you know, if you think that the government created a structure where they, they you know, they were willing to accept a certain level of interference, mm -hmm. then you should the supply and conference agreement should be gone. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have to vote at the first opportunity to take the government down, but you should not have a supply and confidence agreement if you believe that the government is leaving room for some interference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's... The confidence doesn't, doesn't apply here. Right. And just as the prime minister said in his interview, I would be very wary of any leader who tells you that there's nothing, nothing, you know, nothing to be concerned of in this party. Yeah. You know, the information, uh, one of the things that I pointed out that Evan did point out in, in this one, but is how Mr. Singh was uh, unable to answer a direct question directly when he was making accusations about other people, except for the part about, you know, for him not finding it uh, comprehensible that Pierre would not get his security clearance. But when it came to anything having to do with his party, then he was able to give very short, very clear answers. And I'm thinking that if 
the information or the intelligence gleaned in this case is not enough to be able to say j'accuse, it should not also probably not be enough to absolve. Mm, indeed. And Mr. Singh was very, very quick to absolve his own party. That's a little too convenient on this file for my uh, my taste. Um, so we'll see what uh, comes out of it. Um, again, all of this now, you know, because it's you have Miss May, you have Mr. Singh, and it seems contradictory, and it, Mr. Singh is being revealed more and more as somebody that did not take it seriously. So if it's somebody that doesn't take it seriously, you basically eliminate his take. And you have Miss Mays, and you have the prime ministers at the moment. Uh, and the prime minister is, I, I don't know, maybe this is a bit of strategy, but, you know, s saying to be wary of any leader that is, uh, that says that they've got nothing to worry about, um, without, as without specifically saying, Hey, you know, you've got traitors in your midst because there's a wide broad wage of activities, mm -hmm. um, you know, the when Jagmeet sings that says that his party was a target, but probably not a beneficiary. Uh, there might be a couple of people who are possibly unwittingly, most likely in this case, and probably very very low level offense. You know, like you know somebody wanting to organize a again a, a tour bus of some people to go vote or, or getting a community group involved that might uh, raise some money or do some door knocking uh for you but um yes um uh, i'm sorry i got totally distracted there uh for a second um but yeah uh we have to uh just you know people that are ready to point the finger at somebody else and blame and people that are equally willing to absolve themselves at this stage of the game, probably uh, you want to look at that with a little bit of suspicion. Not necessarily that there's something up, but maybe that they're trying to move the, play, the pieces on the chessboard in a manner that's most advantageous to them, but not necessarily in our best interest as citizens and voters. All right, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed. All right, Mr. Grizzly. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember, sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps and groups all about us. If you would like to support us, you can, thanks to the Ray Girl, who has sponsored our pod page. That's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with the hyphen between each one of those words and i'm sure mr grizzly will put the qr code up any moment for us and if you go there and click subscribe when we have something fresh off the bandwidth it will come directly to you and if you would like to support us in other ways you can make like kit elaine and go to the true north eager beaver media incorporated youtube page uh that's our little home uh, one of our homes on the web and there we have some buttons for you like share subscribe all of them are waiting for you so you can lick them or click them whichever you do it makes us so happy and uh we're uh closing in on 2400 mr grizzly so um kids and cubs uh keep on showing us the love we uh we really enjoy it thank you so much we want to see how high how 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 high we can fly <laughs> five short a itchy here five short my nose is a little itchy uh, there we go uh and if you'd like to support us in other ways remember there is our emergency hydration fund at our coffee page so you go to coffee ko-fi.com slash Eager Beaver, lowercase letters, all the one word, or you scan the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head here if you're watching, and that will bring you to our coffee page. And if you'd like to leave us a little tip because you'd like to encourage us to do more and let us know that you enjoy our product, that would make us very happy indeed. Because democracy is something that you do, please do write your letter to the Minister of Veteran Affairs, Jeanette petit Patelar, to demand better treatment of our veterans. If you are in the province of Alberta, please get involved in the NDP leadership race and please make sure to do your bit to conserve some water if you're in the area of Calgary. 
very, very important. Uh, if you are in the province of Saskatchewan or New Brunswick, please also ch- and British Columbia, check to what you can do to get ready for the provincial elections, either to volunteer at a polling station, a volunteer for your preferred candidate, or uh, to plan your vote and make sure that you bring someone with you because democracy is something that you do. It's not a spectator sport. you got to get involved. All right. From the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager beaver saying it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, do we have some words of wisdom? Uh, yeah, it's just chill, relax, take it easy. It's going to be super hot the next couple of days, so stay hydrated and don't harm yourself. Yes, hydrated, don't over-extenuate, don't go do harsh physical, hard, very hard physical exercise during the heat, light clothes, loose clothes. Um, yeah. yeah, take it easy, basically. Take it easy, be kind to yourself. This is not what, whatever project you've got going on, like this, you know, whatever deadline you have, it's not worth you dehydrating or having your heart stop on you or you know having your blood pressure just go out. Take it easy. Live, live to fight Take another day. Yeah. All right. All righty. Got to go. I'll see you. See you soon. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master. Hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music.